I'm joined here today by Helen Hawthorne, who is the Head of Solution Engineering EMEA at Zoom. Yep. Helen, thank you so much for joining me. We're here to talk about diversity today and how important that is to this industry as it continues to grow and evolve exponentially, so yep. it seems. Um, if I could just get started, just tell me a bit about your role and your route into the industry. How did you find your way into AV? So, um, so yeah, Helen Hawthorne, as I said, head up the Solution Engineering over at Zoom. Um, my entrance in was, look, I went to university, right, as most people do in this, in this industry. I did computer science, came out thinking that I was going to be a programmer, actually. Now, what made me think I was going to be that and shut in a little room, but that's, that's what I thought it was going to be. Um, when I came out of university, the bubble had burst rather dramatically in the IT. Yes, I am that old um, industry. And so I started looking around, couldn't find much out there, um, decided to go traveling. And uh, while I was waiting to go traveling, this little thing popped up on my screen from BT. And it was their graduate program. And I filled out this little form. Little did I know there was a lot more to it than that. Getting a graduate position, had no idea. Um, but that's where I ended up. So I started my career at BT as a graduate. Um, I rocked up my first day. I had no idea what I was going to be. They kind of just employed you as a graduate. And I was told I was going to be a solution engineer. No one tells you what a solution engineer is. It's not the kind of thing that comes up at school. So very quickly I understood it was in sales. Um, it meant that most definitely I was technical. They did the normal things. I was put through all my accreditations and got on the tools and did all that kind of stuff. And it was super exciting for me because as someone that was wholly technical based, all of a sudden I realized there was a way of taking that and being in front of customers as well. And that's really what floated my boat. I was there for a couple of years. Um, and then I started moving around. So my next step out and the reason I moved was because I've been at BT for about three years, really enjoyed my time there. The training was second to none, but I wanted to work at a smaller organization. For me, that was important, getting a bit more control. Um, walked into a smaller organization in the city. Again, it was a really nice experience. I didn't feel that, um, frankly, my gender put me back any, um, if anything. I think I walked into rooms and customers went, oh dear, we have a woman. And then by the end of it, it was like, oh, we have a woman, because I knew what I was talking about. So I think it, it, I think in a technical role for me, once you prove yourself very quickly, actually that disappears in my view. Um, the, the next step for me, honestly, was rocking up somewhere and after three months being told, hey, we're gonna make you a manager. And I was like, no, please don't do that. I, I don't want that, that isn't what I wanna do. Um, but no, they decided that would be the right route for me. So I took on this role. I took on this role and was given, I think it was eight guys. It was a long time ago that were all the same age as my dad. Wasn't actually that old. It's the same age as I am now. But back then as a kind of 24, 25 year old, that, that was pretty old. And they're looking at me thinking, why are you managing me? And I'm looking at them thinking, I don't know. <laughs> Let's have some fun. Um, Every possible thing that could have gone wrong did go wrong that, that year. Uh, it was an interesting dynamic, right? Being a woman in that industry with, with guys of that age group definitely was not a great experience. It definitely toughens you up. Um, I think I've said this before on, on these kind of sessions. I'm Greek Cypriot by background and I have near on 18 first cousins that are all boys. And I always say that there is nothing that any engineer can say or do to me that hasn't happened during my upbringing, right? So I have uh, quick comebacks and I think that helps to have a bit of thick skin. Um, so yeah, stayed around there for a bit. Um, my next journeys, honestly, was going in to various different areas, Insight, Computer Center, Polycom, and, and now where I am at Zoom, and building out teams. It's what I became pretty good at doing. Um, really enjoy the end to end. Um, there have been some bumps along the way, definitely being a woman you get some odd comments um, along the way. I remember once doing a, <laughs> being told, hey, you're going to be a speaker at a global, global sales um, kind of thing over in San Jose. I'm like, oh, that's fantastic, excellent, that's great. And then the next comment I had from someone was, oh yeah, I heard they were looking for a woman. Things like that, it comes up. You kind of just go, yep, yeah, bothered, on we get, you just got to crack on with it. So it's been an interesting journey for me, but it's been good. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's no question that there is a, a still a long way to go within this industry, yeah. but it's great to see companies at least raising more awareness and taking positive action to counter this. We know Zoom is a very forward thinking company yep. in this industry. Now moving, you know, it's not for just in the IT space, and moving into the EV space yep. as well. The industry wants more diversity, but 
what are companies like Zoom really doing about it? Hunting, if I'm honest with you, right? So I'll be candid, it's, it's difficult. And the difficulty is that it starts at school. And it, and it generally does, right? So here I am and I want the best engineers. That's what I want. That's, that's what I want, that's what I want to achieve. Actually in the pre-sales space, so you know, some of my areas in that pre-sales space, women exceed, right? They're very uh, communicative. They like working with, with customers. So there's nothing that I want more than to bring in all kinds of diversity, but obviously what's close to my heart is from a female perspective, finding people is near on impossible. So for me, really going out there and I try to get out there in the community quite a lot myself and it's encouraged within Zoom to really go out there and start speaking about what we do and the different job roles because there is this misconception about what working in AV looks like right they the picture they've got is very different from what what we achieve out there day to day the second thing is in my more kind of early in career roles really really going out there and finding them um, and we do right so I'm I'm pleased to say that within that those more early in career roles, we've pretty much got a 50-50 split, which for me is exactly what we want to be seeing. Um, it does become more difficult in the senior roles, unfortunately. So cultivating that, bringing them through, ensuring that they've got the right support within the organisation is really super important. Um, but also ensuring that they're at the right level. I'm, I'm not into, um, I know there was a, a whole thing, positive discrimination is great, but what it needs to be is getting the right people in the right place and acknowledging that people learn in different ways, they show up in different ways, um, and that is very different from, a, from all different diversity backgrounds. That could be slightly different. So really understanding and learning about different areas is super important and how they best learn. You make some really interesting points there, especially about the terms of education because I've had so many conversations with people from all aspects of the AV industry and how they got here and a lot of the time you hear that they got here by accident they fell into these roles yeah. or fell into the industry a lot of the time education is so important raising awareness of this industry is a, a massive massive issue at the moment yeah. in terms of attracting people and tackling the skill sources which has plagued this industry for a number of years now mm -hmm. um, in terms of educational opportunities, diversity, I believe they go hand in hand. How do we really educate, attract, nurture, and more importantly, retain diverse talent in the industry? Uh, number one, we need to get out and about more. Right? We really, really need to get into the schools. right? And, and actually, school, most schools are craving for people to come in and talk to their students about different aspects and jobs and roles and careers. Um, I think we really focus a lot on university, which is great. But actually, it's too late by then. Right? It's way too late by then. You need to get in early. You need to make it fun. Right? You need to bring some of these workshops that we do. And, and the stuff we do is exceptionally fun. Right? We break stuff. We repair stuff. We, I mean, I know it's all, the complexity is there, but actually it's base root. How I started was taking things apart, much to my mother's disgust. Right? She'd come home to TVs and videos. And, and I think for... For most youngsters now, that's become really, really difficult because, as you can imagine, technology has become smaller. So to open it up and see how it works, it's just, it's just not the same route anymore. So for me, we really need to be getting into the schools at a really early age and working with them hand in hand and then continue that. I think mentorship is really important as well. So going out there and having them having people they can reach out to and know they can pick up the phone and say hey what about this what is that and then taking them into our environments right so going and doing work experience is all well and good and we and I, I don't know uh, about much of, of Europe at large mainly over in the MENA region but I know in Western Europe we always have that capability to take people into our workplace we don't do enough of it it's, I don't see it in our industry as much as I do in other people's industries and, yeah. and I think we fail at that. No, there, there's a lot of truth in that and I think we've already mentioned that there's a lot of work to do here. It's one thing to say we're taking action or we're thinking about encouraging this. Yep. It's another to actually do so and to make that positive, uh, those, those positive actions. What would be your message to companies that are slower to adopt diversification in their workforce? What is it they should really be doing? <laughs> You're missing out. So the one thing that diversity brings is multiple different views on the same topic. Right? And, and what I notice is in teams that where everybody looks and sounds the same, 
um, the answers are normally very similar, right? So I'm all into bringing good people in from different backgrounds, from different areas of the business as well, to really give that diversity so the answers to the problem are not always the same. Um, I also find that there's a loyalty that comes with bringing in my more diverse talent, right? Because unfortunately, it's seen as, oh, they've, they've invested in me. Other people haven't, but they have. So the loyalty that you get from bringing in people that not are not normally kind of put through that interview process um, brings you, yeah, brings you that, that, that real, I want to work with you. This is where I want to be. I'm going to go all out to make sure that you know it wasn't the right, wrong decision to bring me in. Um, so yeah, 100%. Absolutely, and it's great to have these voices who are really advocating for greater change in the industry, and I think that's a net plus for, for everyone in the yes. industry. Helen, thank you so much for your time. No problem, thank you very much.